In the Gospel of Luke, chapters 22 and 23, we read of the Jewish leaders bringing Jesus to trial for blasphemy because he claimed to be the Son of God. However, the leaders knew that under Roman law, they could not have Jesus killed for this accusation. And so they appealed to the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, with a false charge of treason against Jesus. After hearing the accusations of the Jewish leaders and after questioning Jesus himself, Pilate determines that Jesus is innocent and that he's done nothing deserving death. In fact, Pilate declares Jesus is innocent not once, but three times. But the Jewish leaders would not have it. So they stir the crowds to demand that Jesus be crucified. Pilate tries to appease the crowd in a last ditch effort. Every year at the Passover, Roman officials would offer to release a criminal to the people. And so Pilate says that they can choose between Jesus or a notorious criminal named Barabbas. Now Barabbas was an insurrectionist and a murderer. Pilate seems to want justice for Jesus and so he figures they clearly won't choose Barabbas over Jesus. Again, the Jewish leaders influence the crowd to ask for Barabbas instead of Jesus, and they call again for Jesus' crucifixion. They say, away with this man, crucify him, and give us Barabbas. Interestingly, the name Barabbas actually means son of the father. Pilate is offering them to choose between the innocent, true son of the father and a heinous criminal who bears the same name. Pilate gives in to the pressure. Barabbas is released and Jesus is condemned to death. The guiltless son of the father is condemned while the guilty son of the father is let go. The sinless one dies in place of the guilty one. The spotless lamb of God who never deserved to die takes the punishment of the one who did. And the cross that Barabbas should have carried is now about to be placed on Jesus. This is clearly a living portrait of what Jesus would accomplish in his death for sinners who would trust in him. This is the great exchange of the cross of Christ, the innocent punished and the guilty released. Spiritually speaking, every one of us was in the bondage of sin. It was our prison. Now, some may think, well, I'm not that bad. I'm no Barabbas. I've never murdered or committed insurrection. But Jesus said, though you may not have murdered, if you've ever been angry or hated or called someone an idiot, attacking their character, then you are liable to the same judgment as murder because murder begins in the heart. You may not be an insurrectionist, which is treason, But if you have not lived with God at the center of your life at all times, always honoring him, always obeying him, always submitting to him, then you have committed spiritual treason against the rule of Almighty God. So we're no better than Barabbas. We're we're just better at keeping it out of the public eye. But God looks at the heart. So we're all under the sentence of eternal death with no way out. And then God the Son takes the punishment we deserved so that all who believe in him may become beloved sons of God. Now we may wonder, what did Barabbas ever think of this? Did did he ever seek to find out what Jesus was really about? Did he really understand what he came to do? Did he understand what his death would do? Well, we don't know if Barabbas ever trusted Jesus, but if he did, his name would take on a whole new meaning. He would say, son of the father is not just my name. It's who I am. I am adopted and a beloved son of the father forever. And so it is for everyone who turns from their sins and trusts in this exalted son, who took our place, who took our death, who took our cross, that all who believe in him may go free.